Welcome back to our World Congress. I'm happy to see you all gathered here again. From now on, have we have a panel discussion by experts and committee volunteers from all over the world. Before introducing the moderator, I have an announcement. The original moderator, Ms. Mai, will not be able to attend this conference. Thus, Ms. Tashiro Akiko will be the moderator today. Ms. Tashiro has more than 20 year experience in offender rehabilitation. She used to be a UNIFED professor as well as a government probation officer. She is currently the principal deputy director of the supervision division of the Ministry of Justice. I'd like to invite Ms. Tashiro to lead this panel discussion. Ms. Tashiro, the stage is yours. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. As been announced, Ms. Mai cannot attend this panel discussion today, so I'm stepping in to serve as a moderator. Thank you very much for your um, patience and understanding in advance. So, um, I am going to start this panel discussion now. And at this panel discussion, the panelists first will talk about the efforts and the core values of the community volunteers supporting offender reintegration in their respective countries for 10 minutes each and the remaining time will be used for the discussion. At the end of the discussion, we aim to adopt the Kyoto Declaration on Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration with the approval of each panelist. Now, the panelists will deliver the presentations. I would, um, I would like to introduce today's excellent panelists to you all, from left to right. Mr. Vitaman Sonson Kajit, General, Director General of the Department of Probation of the Ministry of Justice of Thailand. Dr. Manuel G. Ko, former Administrator of the Parole and Probation Administration of the Department of Justice of the Philippines. Mr. Imafuku Shoji, Director General of the Rehabilitation Bureau of the Ministry of Justice of Japan, and Ms. Ando Ryoko, President of the Tochigi Prefectural Federation of Probation Officers Associations. Ms. May W. Mubao, Director, State Department for Correctional Services, Probation and Aftercare Service of Ka Kenya. Ms. Jennifer Oz, Chairperson of the Parole Board of Canada, and Mr. Steve Pitts, Ambassador of the Confederation of European Probation from the United Kingdom. For the biographies of each panelist, please see the handout. So, I would like to go on to the first presentation. The first presentation is delivered by Mr. Vitavan Sanson Kajit, Director General of the Department of Probation of the Ministry of Justice of Thailand. Mr. Sanson Kajit, the floor is yours. Mr. Sanson Kajit, I think your microphone is off. Can you turn on the microphone, please? And not that screen. Um, please go back to the Teams, Microsoft Teams screen. That is um, PowerPoint screen. So close the PowerPoint slide and... That's all right. Okay, it's now working. Yeah, I can yeah. hear voice, yes? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon again, speaker, moderator, lady and gentlemen. Uh, it is an honor for me to present the volunteer probation officer system in Thailand. Uh, we have the, at least five topics uh, to share experience uh, with, with uh, for the first one is all will 
And the second one is uh, the lower and less responsibility and how we get them to join us and incentive them to run the business. And the last is a policy initiative that we try to, uh, to use uh, the effective from the people. So for the first one, uh, all of the uh, VPO in Thailand, uh, who are the VPO? I think every country is the same meaning. VPO is a person with a gener generous mind contributing to a safety society and helping an offender to live normally in the community. This is a meaning of VPO. For in Thailand, uh, we put it in the act of probation. This is a very strong and uh, the director, the director general of the Department of Probation, uh, will be appoint them to be an officer, to be a volunteer. So, based on the core value, uh, we think uh, very, very seriously about the volunteer spirit, uh, because uh, they are the people who will help the government officer to creating safe and crime free society where the offender stay. And underlying principle, uh, Thailand has introduced the VPO system since 1985. It's quite a long time ago, for at least 40 years already. Uh, that based on our believing that the concept of no one can solve problem in the community better than the community themselves. As the main mission of the DOP is the community correction. The community should have the system and mechanic to protect uh, its own society from crime and reoffending. The VOP system has increased the public participation in crime justice system and it will lead to the sustainable crime prevention. This is a model of a partnership to make a crime justice system stronger and stronger by people, for people themselves. And I believe that this is one of the key to our success uh, that no one is left behind. For the law and responsibility of them, uh, the main responsibility of a uh, VPO are to assist the probation officer, that is the government officer, including uh, try to finding the facts for the background of them, of the offender, uh, and of uh, supervision them, rehabilitation, and also after care service for them. All uh, of their duty are under the supervision of the government side by the probation officer. This is the example for the VOP activity in Thailand. Uh, the first uh, picture is uh, the, they send them to visit with the government side uh, to the offender and pay the uh, low like a lecturer uh, for all of them. And for the next one, the new task that we try to propose to them uh, by the Director General, the, at, at the present, we have uh, used the EM, the electronic monitoring uh, equipment or device. Uh, they, they use like uh, the, new, the new things to support us. Uh, to control or supervise the, the offender. Uh, there are new important duty that we should have a cooperate with the people in the community uh, to observe. So uh, we ask for supporting from the voluntary uh, probation officer. And we have a special uh, police crime that we think it's very seriously 
uh, to the community. Such as we have a seven one list crime, such as a serial killer, major drug dealer, a lab murder. Uh, under the operation of uh, our office, we call the operation of the Justice Safety Observation Ad Hoc Center. Uh, and they uh, and we use uh, EM equipment and ask uh, the VPO to give advice uh, on how to behave uh, under electronic monitoring and check the condition of the device and report the probation officer uh, every uh, frequency, maybe at least uh, seven days a uh, time. This is a very new task that we try to use with the new equipment. And how we try to find the voluntary probation officer. Uh, at, on the screen, this is a principle that uh, we set it, such as uh, they at least 20, 21st years old, graduate with the middle school, something like that. Uh, so now we we try to find them by uh, use the officer of the government try to find, and we have a committee to consider about the uh, quality uh, or qualification of them. At the present, we try to support the present of a VPO uh, to select the new one also, because uh, they can uh, expand a little bit deeper and better than us about the term of volunteer. The other one is a qualification uh, that very important and uh, I think it's the basis of uh, the what do you call, uh, anyway, this is a, uh, it's a, like a, based on the volunteer mind, this is a qualification, as you see in the uh, screen, the first one is high responsibility, we need the people who has a very high responsibility to, to run this job, and the other one is uh, pension and compassion. We are looking for the VP for in high responsibility and we tell us that being patient and care to public interest and positive attitude toward the offender and also the things we see on them. This is a common characteristic of Thai VPO. Uh, at present, we have at least uh, almost 20,000 people. Uh, I think this is a very quite common uh, Thailand, but uh, we try to, to uh, support them in 20,000 people who run the business by using the training that we separate in three because of training. The first one is a training course for the beginner. Uh, of the news we all have good intention to work with us but we may not know exactly how we work or the scope of what they can do. So this course will tell them what that do they do. There will be a train being focused on law, operation and operational guidelines so that they won't do anything wrong. And the offender they work with are protected as well. This is a 
the second group of the clinic. And the third one is specialization course to develop them for specific skill uh, that will support the mission and new policy of the, our department, for example, the part of monitoring high risk ex offender and difference operation for children also. On the screen, we will see the pro project to develop uh, VPO potential to supervise offender and to safety of society and confidence of people. This is a term of uh, serving of the each people of VPO six year for them, but they can the election to run also. The performance of evaluation comes every two years and we evaluated by the probation officer. They run their duty by not paying from the government. Incentive and increment that we did we know that the uh, they should have a good heart because they don't get paid. However, they may uh, receive public recognition token of honor, or they may be given the royal declaration as their reward. As uh, we all know that our BPO do not receive salary from the uh, department. Uh, so there should be the, the other incentive, like uh, receiving the loyal declaration, as you can see in the upper photo. Uh, maybe the greatest design of the Thai BPO. The left uh, button photo is the example of the honoring ceremony. Uh, ceremony. support them they have a policy in in initiate initiative uh, uh, the first one is restructuring the EPO management system and the second one is strengthen your law and also enhance the uh, potential this is a new uh, initiative that we try to run this VPO uh, in the at present we change them from the like a, a strong organization to be used like a club. Uh, because of the reason that we think like this, because uh, it's very simple by, by uh, allowing them to cooperate together like a, an official and more flexible. For example, a club can inst instantly organize fundraising and it's, it's, it's the, uh, easier for them to work together. Anyway, we should uh, stand, strengthening the OPU law also. The second policy is uh, to strengthen uh, the OPU will help TESOC uh, in monitoring high risk ex offender. This is a for example that we task. So we choose to uh, support them how to uh, face with uh, the ex offender that have a high risk uh, experience. Moreover, we also take part in the job supporting and training for the offender also. For enhancing the VOP potential, in my opinion, it's also the job of the VPO to provide the offender and ex-offender what they lack and to increase their ability. So it is better for the VPO 
to have some special knowledge, such as a psychological skill uh, of constantly understanding the offender more. A new technology used in cooperation system. This is uh, all for the present policy that we will try to support the uh, VPO to run uh, how, together, recycle the government side on like a uh, motto, no one is left behind. So we think that uh, the offender can return to be a good people and live normal life, but, but not because of the probation officer alone. Community support and the VPO are needed in the process and they are the key to save the society. So I do support the concept of the Kyoto Declaration so that no one, not even the people who do wrong, is left behind. This is all for my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Sankun Kazit. And please give Mr. Sankun Kazit a round of applause. Okay, so next, and Dr. Manuel G. Cole, former administrator of the Parole and Probation Administration of the Department of Justice of the Philippines, deliver the presentation about the Volunteer Probation Assistance Program in the Philippines. So, Dr. Cole, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, and uh, good evening. Yeah, I think one of the, uh, uh, the one of the sublime goals of the Parole and Probation Administration through its volunteer program is to make the community involved in uh, in the rehabilitation of offender. Uh, that's why uh, it's really a multiplier force, considering that we have inadequate number of uh, probation officers. You could see in the board the mission of the uh, volunteerism of the Parole and Probation Administration, which is to promote the rehabilitation and development of PPA clients through a competent core of volunteers using the holistic approach in volunteer and community resource development. Our vision is really uh, to, to institutionalize this system uh, with competent members working in effective partnership with the PPA in pursuing the rehabilitation of the clients towards a better quality of life in the community. Next slide, please. So you, last year, before I retired from the government, uh, I was able to amend this uh, section, 5968, uh, through a Republic Act 10707, and empower the volunteers. Before, they were called Volunteer Probation Aid. But we changed the name, it becomes Volunteer Probation Assistance. So the reason there is really the community should own community-based treatment and not just the probation officers. So just to show to you that particular section of Presentation the 3968, the original law, which was passed uh, during the time of former President Marcos. Next slide, please. Uh, our objectives in pursuing volunteer resource management, first is to amplify the extent of services rendered to client. At present, in, in, in the, we have around 83,371 clients all over the country. Our officers is more than 1,000 only. So there's a need really to have the volunteers to be able to help our organic probation and parole officers. Second, develop a competent core of BPA who will assist the PPA officers and then inculcate greater citizens for awareness and understanding of the criminal justice system 
and its components. And then enhance community participation in crime prevention, treatment of offenders, and dispensation of justice. And lastly, to foster the attitude of meaningful involvement in all social uh, community or political activity. Next slide, please. The uh, agency strategies in recruitment, placement, and, and uh, involvement of the of, uh, PPA. Two, uh, obtain quality PPA. First, we continuously conduct public uh, gathering or public information with the objective of enticing sectoral and individual involvement. Our officers are very active with regard to information dissemination. Established network of sectoral groupings, potential source of volunteers. So all over the country, in the Philippines, uh, our officers there tap all our uh, organizations, whether they are non-government or they are government organizations, or even the local government, the, 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 the local barangays or the village government. And then we conduct background inquiry of the potential individual interested to participate. And then we also utilize the agency website announcing recruitment of PPAs. Now, our field officers uh, in the recruitment have some sort of a standard. So very important uh, uh, is the character, the competence, and the commitment of our uh, uh, prospective volunteers. Please, next slide, please. Now, as to the qualifications, there is one very unique uh, qualifications, uh, preferably 25 years of old, older, reputable member of the community with good moral background, preferably a resident of the same community as the client, preferably with adequate source of income or economically stable, willing to serve without compensation, willing to prepare reports. No criminal records or conviction. This is an exception, except for uh, former clients who gain community acceptance. That means those clients who have been be uh, uh, before have been convicted of crime, but they were able to show their uh, uh, change in life. They are considered as also volunteers. And then lastly, we adequate adequate to help. This is then to, to give uh, to give chance to them to be able to be part of the uh, uh, the group of volunteers that would help the community. Next slide, please. Our objectives and uh, volunteerism is uh, to work in close consultations and collaboration with the supervising officer, observe strict confidentiality in accordance with the Data Privacy Act. This is very important because there is a law now in the Philippines prohibiting or uh, safeguarding the privacy of individual, the records. Maintain honest recording and monthly reporting activities to their supervising officer. Devote a substantial and quality time for supervision of clients and perform various tasks. Actually, these are the tasks of a uh, volunteer, but they were being trained uh, in, in, in the conduct of guidance and counseling, uh, giving some job or skills uh, training, facilitate in the restorative justice program, or even in the uh, therapeutic community treatment, which is one of our uh, treatment uh, initiative or treatment modality that we adopted, and then uh, refer client to service providers. And then implement, you say, the TC program. This is, uh, this is the main... Uh, program of the agency uh, in the rehabilitation of uh, our clientele. Next slide, please. And then uh, we also evaluate our volunteers. The BPA appointment may be renewed and, re and they could be reappointed. The, uh, the administrator of the uh, parole and probation administration appointed them. So they will be serving uh, with a term of two years, but subject to uh, reappointment. So BPA sustained interest in volunteer work activity, participates in activities of the agency and the BPA association. Actually, during my time 
we establish a network, the association from the city, the provincial, and even the national association of all thieves. And this is very important because they are being empowered uh, through their association. And then BP obtains satisfactory performance based on the evaluation. So there is also an evaluation being conducted by our uh, people there. Next slide, please. So uh, by way of uh, giving them incentives or awards or motivating them to perform well, uh, Usually, we, we give them uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the proper recognition as a, uh, a volunteer association, as an individual volunteer, or even their own projects are being recognized by the agency. So every year, they are, be, they are being given certificate of appreciations uh, for a very satisfactory performance. And this is uh, 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 this, in, uh, this being uh, uh, done in a public uh, uh, public place or a public gathering to recognize them. And then we give the insurance coverage and they reimburse their transportation transportation expenses. Actually, this is a uh, this is one of the amendments that we introduced in uh, uh, the recent law that was passed, amending probation law of 1976 to give them the necessary meal allowance, transportation allowance in support of their uh, uh, pension but they are not they are not given compensation it's just a a, a support uh, to, to be able to move and uh, connect with our client here next slide please so but also for the BPA uh, once they are appointed but if they commit some violation uh, if they commit another offense or violation of any function or disclosure or misuse of confidential information, or uh, he, he shows some undue personal interest or abuse of authority as BPA or an authorized use of resources for personal benefit, extortion, unwanted meddling on officers' activities, personal and other BPA, physical or mental illness or incapacity, or other serious violations. Now, the, uh, the agency has that power also to revoke their appointment, even before the two-year term. So this is one way of disciplining also our BPA. But they are partners. They are partners of the, uh, our officers. Next slide, please. So just uh, to show you, this is the, uh, uh, the total number of volunteer probation assistants from 20, uh, 2010, I think up to uh, 2020. So there is a total of uh, 8,121. Uh, that was the recent. Uh, so you could see, uh, you, you could see why there is a, 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 a few number mobilized compared with the appointed. So when, when I assume, when, before I retired from the government, uh, we, we cleanse the record and uh, the, 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 the total mobilized now by the agency in 2020, in 2019, around 8,121. So they are really working because there are a lot of uh, volunteers before that uh, uh, they already died or they are already uh, not interested to perform. So we have to cleanse the records and uh, look into those who are really working. So these are the total number now that are being mobilized by the agency in 20, I think 2019. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, that's all I think. The, uh, uh, the Kyoto Declaration is one of the, uh, a very unique way of enhancing the community because this is also one way of giving uh, the community and letting them in the forefront of uh, crime prevention. Because I believe that the five pillars in the Philippines, we have the five pillars of the criminal justice system and the community pillar, which is the, uh, uh, I would say, the abstract pillar, provides moral leadership over those four pillars who provide legal leadership. 
and it's it is our the Kyoto Declaration is a very timely uh, move uh, with the UN uh, uh, support that this will be pushed through. Thank you very much and uh, good day. information on the treatment of volunteer programs. This gives us an important perspective on a stable recruitment of volunteers. And thank you very much for your comments about the Kyoto Hokushi Declaration too. So let's give uh, Mr. and Dr. Ko a round of applause. Thank you very much. Okay, so the next presentation is made by Mr. Imafuku Shoji, and Director General of the Rehabilitation Bureau of the Ministry of Justice in Japan, and Ms. Ando Ryoko, President of the Tochigi Prefectural Federation of Probation Officers Associations. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Ms. Tachiro. Good afternoon again, distinct delegate, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to provide you with some perspectives on core value of community volunteers or hogoshi with Ms. Ando Ryoko, one of Japanese hogoshi today. Uh, let me start by introducing the hogoshi system and its value in Japan. Hogoshi are citizen volunteers who support offender rehabilitation in the community in collaboration with government probation officers. They are commissioned by the Minister of Justice based on the Volunteer Probation Officers Act. They perform services serves as community volunteers, meaning no salary is paid for their service, except for the actual expense. In fact, the Fogoshi system has been rooted in Japan for more than 130 years through the initiatives of the private sector. It is now fully established in Japan as an effective offender rehabilitation system. Fogoshi accept probationer and parolees as a community volunteers, not as law enforcement officers, but as their fellow neighbors. They provide them with emphatic care, consultation, and advice by standing on their side and helping them lead their new lives without the offending. Hogoshi have made great contribution to building the inclusive society by bridging, bridging between offenders and the community, raising awareness of the importance of supporting each other and addressing the issues, including social isolation in the community. They are motivated by voluntary spirits for the welfare of others in the community. Hogoshi find happiness in noticing the growth of ex-offenders through helping others. Now, Ms. Ando will present you on core value of Hogoshi from her long-standing experience as Hogoshi. Ms. Ando, floor is yours, please. Thank you, Mr. Imafuku. Good afternoon, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. I am Ando Ryoko, a Japanese Hogoshi. Before researching core values of Hogoshi, I would like to touch upon how I became a Hogoshi. In 1994, when the president of local volunteer probation offices association invited me, saying, you can take part in the volunteer activity that can greatly contribute to the, to the community, it was Hogoshi. At the time, I had been engaged in an international technical cooperation project of the official development assistant overseas and worked as a veterinarian on cattle's leukemia. While at the same time experiencing my own pregnancy, childbirth, and child rearing outside Japan. And I had just come back to Japan. I was looking for a band with a community, so I thought, I wonder if I can help, and decided to accept the invitation. Speaking of the image of Hogoshi at that time, I thought they were local benevolent persons, 
people rooted in the area for many years, also with wealth, status, and honor. There were only few female hogoshi, especially no one like myself, who was not rooted in the local area. The basis of supervision and support for probationers is a regular interview. However, when I was commissioned as a hogoshi, I was worried about these in interviews with probationers. Moreover, each probationer has different backgrounds as to how they grew up, grew up and how they ended up with a crime. I was very worried about how my words would affect them. So I started by observing their small gestures, such as how they closed the door when they came into my house. Even with that words at the beginning, be looking closely at the gestures, we can understand what they are thinking about and what kind of words they are waiting for. Gradually, I could deepen the relationship with them and in the course of conversation, I tried to talk to them in a way that allows them to think about things from their own perspective by, for example, using vague questions in the conversation. I would also tell them that I was there to listen to them when they feel sad, happy, joyful, or troubled. I tried to create an atmosphere and a space where they can talk about whatever they feel comfortable talking about during the interview. The interviews took place at my home, but they often didn't come to the interview on time. When they didn't show up, I would always call them, knowing that they would, the, would be bothered anyway with my home phone call. When they skip an interview, they gradually began to actively contact me. Hogoshi are volunteers who support the offenders. Thanks to the hard work of Hogoshi for others and for the community, the system is now fully established. Thanks to the organization of the Volunteer Probation Officers Association in each community, the Hogoshi can encourage each other in their duties. Still, some people in the community ask, why do we need a hogoshi? Or why do we have to spend our precious tax to help offenders re rehabilitated? I am currently serving as a member of the city council. And some colleagues of the city council have said the same. Thus, our activities still need better understanding by the community, communi communities. So why do we need public understanding? Because after serving their sentences, these offenders will eventually come back to our community. The background of them crimes is often related to isolation and loneliness, such as having no one to turn to or consult with even if they are in trouble. Hogoshi support offenders who live in the same community and connect them with the community because by excluding them from our community, we could be creating a situation for the safety and well-being of, of our community. That is why it, in addition to treatment activities, community activities to seek the understanding and the cooperation of local residents in offender rehabilitation are also very important for us. In each community, Hogoshi deliver calendars in, and magazines to be elementary, junior high, senior high school, and universities to introduce our role and activities. 
Through these activities, we are seeking the understanding and the cooperation of local residents. Every Hogoshi belongs to his or her local volunteer probation officers association. They are required to participate in regular training sessions, theme-based meetings, and various events organized by each association. Most of Hogoshi are positive-minded people who don't speak ill of others, and who always think about what they can do for the, for the community. I believe they are like-minded fellows who work together in one direction to solve various problems. I think it is very important for us to set up regular meetings to share necessary information at the Offender Rehabilitation Support Center establish exclusively activity for Hogoshi. When I first became a Hogoshi, I was told to carry out my activities quietly without letting the community know that I was a Hogoshi. This is because probation Probationers go to Hogoshi's homes for interviews, and if neighbors find out I am a Hogoshi, the community members will know that the person visiting my home is an offender. Five years ago, the Act for the Prevent of Redivism was enacted, which clarified the role and responsibilities of the national government and the local government in the preve prevention of disease divisible. <laughs> Thanks to the act, our extensive existence as Hogoshi became visible. Still, even today, when I meet my fellow local residents to ask if they would be inter interested in becoming a Hogoshi, I have a hard time finding candid candidates because of the negative image that being a Hogoshi is a tougher task. Recently, we hold a committee for the examination of candidates for Hogoshi in the community in order to notify the shortage of Hogoshi. At the committee, we in invite this representative from the local Federation of Neighborhood Associations, Council of Welfare Commissioners, and Commissioned Child Welfare Volunteers, PTE Federation, and other organizations to gather for information on Hogoshi candidates in the community. Finally, I am very grateful and excited that Hogoshi is taken up as a main theme of this World Congress. I believe if Hogoshi becomes a global term and its value is promoted worldwide, Japanese Hogoshi will be greatly encouraged to carry out even better activities. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Imafuku and Ms. Ando. So the next presentation is from Ms. Mary W. Mubao, the Director of State Department for Correctional Services, Probation and Aftercare Service of Kenya. And I'm sorry, um, because of my poor moderation, uh, we're a little bit um, behind time. So as I said in the beginning, um, the presentation time is um, 10 minutes. So thank you for your cooperation. So Ms. Mubao, the floor is yours. Community probation volunteers, or CPVs, play an important assistive role in the management of non-custodial offenders. In Kenya, the Community Probation Volunteers Program was established in 2005, seeking to assist with information gathering, offender supervision, reintegration, and other services. CPV is a person who has been 
selected or appointed by probation department to assist a probation officer in dispensation of his duties. He, the, note that he is not replacing a probation officer. He, he or she is appointed to assist the probation officer in offender supervision. In of, let's generally call it offender management. And where we started, especially in the marginalized areas, it worked well. Uh, and we, we went on improving so that uh, every county has, uh, has the program running. Active at the local community level, community probation volunteers complement the work of probation officers and offer vital support to offenders on non-custodial sentences and ex-offenders as well as their families. The CPVs basically help the probation officers in their work. Uh, they are gathering information in the area of supervision and also awareness creation in the community where they are stationed. They also help us in monitoring uh, because they are, they are closer. A probation officer uh, requires the, uh, to meet uh, an offender maybe once a month. But uh, a volunteer who might be very close to where the offender is can see that of offender more often and therefore keep informing us, keep updating us. And uh, that network is very, very important and it impacts well in the rehabilitation and supervision of offenders. Right. Kwa sababu ile 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 kitu najua kina madam Sasmi amepata ni tracing ya wale watu mtu akipeana details yake kimakosa huyo mtu atapatikana probation officer akijua huyu mtu amesema ni diesel village village gani village fulani akiandika tu ni rahisi kwake kujua hiyo village iko na VPO itakuwa ni rahisi kwake ku the use of CPVs has brought many benefits to probation work. Here in Wamunyu Mwala in Machakos County, the volunteers who are members of this community have established a good network with the local administration and members of the community to ensure that offenders are reintegrated back into society. She does the natokea kama huku mashule ni mwetu utovu wa nidhamu unapata kuna cases mingi ambazo huwa zinaenda mpaka zinafika Tunafika huku uh, kotini na hawa, hawa volunteers huwa na tusaidia sana. Saa hili zile tukona hawa watoto, hawa volunteers huwa na waongelesha. Mimi nikiwekwa kukuwa na command my client ilikuwa ni juu ya age factor. At least tuneza kuwa over the same age. So neza msaidia kwa ilikuwa ni venya neza jinua kama mama eze kulea watoto. Alafu pia ilikuwa nieze tu kumonyesha si lazima kungoja apatiwe na mze. Yeah, she can work for herself. No, 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 wete. Tenye yu, vinda ya vute nene dhana stwe stilinge. Na waka nga maelesia. Waka maka andavi yu waka ambia chuki ya ile. Stwe stilinge si ya ile. Na maswane ya maingeti masiwa. The use of CPVs in communities like this has helped mitigate any feelings of suspicion and mistrust for probation officers in certain parts of society and overcome inadequate community participation in offender management. We decided that um we will consider the principle of proximity. Uh, those days, uh, they would do long distances. But uh, we decided to come up with a bigger target of, in terms of numbers, so that uh, the, 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 the volunteer and the offender are close in terms of, of where they live, where they come from, and that uh, greatly reduces cost of communication because it's walking distance you don't maybe you don't need airtime very very little in terms of 
cost implications. Good afternoon, uh, participants. Uh, thank you uh, for the invitation to participate uh, in this uh, forum. As you have noted, we reformed our volunteer program to make it more integrated in the community. Instead of uh, calling it uh, volunteer probation, pro probation officers, as it was when we met in Vienna, we now have it as community probation volunteer. This is because we wanted to enhance effectiveness in service delivery by bringing the social and physical distance between the probation officer and the community. As a follow-up from Vienna meeting, we set a target of increasing the numbers of our volunteers to about 10,000, where we would have at least one volunteer in a village. We are also targeting to have it embedded in the law embed the program in the laws of our country. We are also looking forward to organizing and, and mobilizing them into a national association as well as the local uh, uh, associations. We are also going to build their capacity Currently, we have developed a curriculum and a training documentary. This, is, What you have seen is an introduction of the program, but we are going further on this documentary to prepare one that is for training purposes. So we, we really want to appreciate the partners UNODC and all the other partners that have supported us uh, to enrich and strengthen the volunteer program. And for the Kyoto Declaration, we want to join the other partners and we recognize the value of community volunteers who interact and provide support for offenders as fellow citizens working with professional probation officers who have the expertise knowledge. We urge the participants to lobby for legal framework in the member states and to mobilize resources to strengthen the community volunteer program in our respective countries. We want to thank you very much. That's what we have. Ohio gozaimasu. <laughs> thank you very much, Ms. Mabao. Thank you very much for sharing your beautiful video. Yes, it was really informative. Thank you so much. So next, uh, we would like to proceed to the next speaker um, from Canada, Ms. Jennifer Oz, Chairperson of the Parole Board of Canada. So Ms. Oz, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, it is an honor to be presenting at this workshop, and I thank the organizers, the Rehabilitation Bureau of uh, the Ministry of Justice uh, in Japan, 
and UNIFE for the tremendous work they have done over the last couple of years. I would like to spend the next 10 minutes highlighting various examples of how volunteers are engaged in the Canadian correctional and conditional release system. Next slide, please. I briefly just want to provide some context about volunteering in Canada and, and, and quickly just to say that approximately 44% of Canadians participate in some form of volunteer work. And I'm going to highlight that 28% of volunteers were aged 55 or over and contributed a higher average of volunteer hours um, than any of the other volu younger volunteers. Um, as, as well, uh, women were slightly more likely to volunteer than men. Next slide, please. Within the prison and parole system, volunteers provide a very strong network of support within Canada's correctional system. Volunteers are recognized as providing an important bridge between the institution and the community, and they enable offenders to interact with the broader community. Volunteers in corrections and conditional release range in age and experience from university students to retired seniors and often include former offenders. Next slide, please. Volunteers are involved in many activities, both in prisons and in the communities, such as tutoring, social and recreational activities, and substance abuse program. In the community, they often help with the basic logistics of day-to-day -day reintegration, such as how to take a bus, open a bank account, search for a job, or find housing. Next slide, please. In addition to volunteers and volunteer organizations, there are several committees directly involved with federal corrections. These include community organizations such as the National Associations Active in Criminal Justice, which include the John Howard Societies, the Elizabeth Fry Societies, and the Salvation Army, and so forth. Many of these organizations run their own volunteer programs um, at, to support the programs and services they offer to strengthen community reintegration of offenders. Next slide, please. I just want to highlight a couple of um, volunteer committees that work with the Correctional Service of Canada and also with the Parole Board. Within the Correctional Service of Canada, citizen advisory committees have played such an important role in the federal correctional system for almost 60 years. There is now a citizen advisory committee for each institution and community parole, uh, parole district, and they have actually uh, de were deemed important enough that they were entrenched in the federal correctional legislation. They act as advisors on the operation of facilities, they act as independent observers in the day-to-day -day operations of an institution or a parole office and can bring any concerns uh, to the head of the institution or the head of the parole district office. And finally, they act as an important liaison between their community and the facility or community parole office, providing information and building support to the public on the work that we do. Next slide, please. We also have ethnocultural um, committees that are made up of volunteers. They provide the Correctional Service of Canada with advice and expertise on ethnocultural issues impacting offenders, including assisting institutions in providing specialized cultural activities to staff and offenders addressing offenders' special, uh, spiritual needs, and facilitating community involvement and building support for offenders returning to their communities. Next slide, please. Both the Correctional Service of Canada and the Parole Board of Canada have their own victim advisory committees. These committees play a pivotal role to ensure that our respective policies, practices, and procedures meet the needs of victims 
while continuing to form with our legislative responsibilities. They are also important advocates for educating the public and other victims about the work that we do and the programs that are available to victims. Next slide, please. Lastly, I want to highlight the work of Circles of Support and Accountability. This innovative and effective volunteer program grew out of a faith-based grassroots initiative concerned about offenders returning to the community with very little support. Eventually, the model was formalized and COSA, as we call it, is primarily involved with high-risk sex offenders who have been released at the very end of their sentence. It has been incredibly successful and the model has been adopted by other jurisdictions around the world. Next slide, please. So there are just a few things I want to highlight on this slide. Um, one is that uh, if, you, if an offender is going to be part of a circle of support and accountability, that, offend, that participation by the offender must be voluntary. Community members who are part of that circle receive formal training, and the overall aim is to reconnect the offender with the larger community. Next slide, please. The relationship and the work of each circle is defined by a circle agreement that sets out ground rules and shared expectations of all persons involved. And this slide provides some of the elements that are included in an agreement. And it's just to ensure that both the offender and the volunteers working in that circle know what is required and expected from each other. Next slide, please. Before I conclude, I just want to say a, a, a few words about the challenges of volunteering. Obviously, the pandemic has severely impacted volunteering in Canada uh, due to concerns about the transmission of the virus, and many of the prisons have, have cycled between being open and closed to the community depending on what's happening um, with the virus at any given time and in every, at any given place. But outside of the pandemic, ongoing challenges include the fact that volunteers need security clearances, which can be time consuming and can involve costs for the volunteer. There's also the need to balance the privacy of offender information and the best interests and safety of the volunteer, which can be a challenge. And also, finally, uh, the, or also the changing demographics in the Canadian population or the aging of the Canadian population is impacting the participation of volunteers. In the last study of volunteers, two-thirds of persons who did not volunteer noted a lack of time as the leading barrier. Next slide, please. I'd just like to say, if you want any further information, uh, that is my contact, because I know I have gone through this quite quickly. But it is evident that volunteers are a key component of the Canadian Correctional and Conditional Release System and they play numerous important roles that contribute to public safety. Their work is deeply appreciated. I appreciate the opportunity to share this information with you, and I hope you found it useful. I would also like to invite you, indeed, I would encourage you to support the Kyoto Hogoshi Declaration. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Oud. Um, it, it uh, your presentation was very interesting to know that you have various and unique volunteers contributing in the field um, corrections or offenders rehabilitation. Thank you so much. And, and thank you also for your um, cooperation in my typekeeping. So, uh, we would like to go on to the final presentation by Mr. Steve Pitts from the UK. 
Mr. Pitt is, a, is the ambassador of the Confederation of European Probation, and he will be presenting community volunteers for offender rehabilitation in Europe, as well as in the UK. So, Mr. Pitt, the floor is yours. Distinguished delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much indeed for inviting me. It's a pleasure and a real honor to contribute to this, the first World Congress for Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration. I would like to frame my points around three time periods, past, present, and future, and to address three main themes. Why community volunteers matter, organizational structures and roles, in particular, the very wide range of activities volunteers undertake in Europe. And finally, to make some concluding strategic and other remarks, I should add that I will move quite quickly through my slides in order to highlight key points. The fuller detail is available as a resource. But first, if I may, a few words of introduction. I would like to acknowledge my own family who introduced me to the work of volunteers. My mother was a probation volunteer, and their early influence is certainly why I'm here today. They would welcome this Congress. And secondly, I would like to thank the volunteers who I met in Tokyo during the World Congress on Probation in 2015 for their hospitality and their insights into the tremendous work they do to support these systems. Europe consists of 44 countries geographically, 27 are members of the European Union, and 47 are members of the Council of Europe, which includes countries to the east of the Black Sea. The Council of Europe is very active in the field of probation and prisons work, supports the collection and analysis of annual data, and produces rules and recommendations for members, and I'll refer to those um, in a moment. The Confederation of European Probation, the CEP, is a 60-member organization across 40 countries. It includes probation agencies, universities, NGOs, and others, and affiliate organizations around the world. Um, in delivering their vision for Europe, the CEP promotes pan-European cooperation, including by conferences, reports, and research, and also we contribute enthusiastically to the World Congress on Probation. In the past, volunteers have always been important, just as they are now, and Dr. Frank Porperino made a similar point. In Europe in the 19th century, volunteers, often attached to churches or charities, worked with courts to support offenders, especially those with drink problems. In Ireland, work with discharged prisoners developed an early form of parole being practiced from the 1850s. In fact, it was volunteers that led to the creation of the probation service in many European countries, including in my own. And the work of volunteers in the present is emphasized by the Council of Europe, who I mentioned a moment ago, their recommendations on European rules and community sanctions and measures. Say, for example, justice cannot be effectively administered in isolation from the community it seeks to serve. It requires both the acceptance and the respect of the public. This level of confidence and commitment is most likely to be achieved if members of the public are encouraged and enabled to participate in the administration of justice. The Council of Europe also talks about some of the roles of volunteers, mentors valued all the more because of their less formal, uh, less, lower level, less formality than the, uh, uh, than the um, uh, professional supervising officers, and as champions of community sanctions and measures helping society to better understand their aims and values. In 2015, a group of NGOs from seven European countries, led by CLINCS, which is a UK infrastructure organization that supports NGOs, conducted a survey of justice involving volunteers in Europe, the JIVE project. 
they noticed two distinct groups of volunteers, the more formal, who may work in courts or prisons, for example, and the widespread engagement of volunteers in civil society through NGOs. Their survey they conducted in Europe showed the wide range of activities that volunteers are engaged in, advising and supporting offenders and prisoners, but also victim support, supporting families and children of ex-offenders, teaching numeracy and literacy, and delivering training courses. I'm going to now very quickly say something about the range of structures and the range of activities in Europe, and I'm going to move quite quickly through those. First of all, in terms of organization, in Austria, an organization, New Start, involves both volunteers and professionals working closely together. They, the number of volunteers is 992, and they have 432 professional employees. They work closely together in teams led by a professional with regular team meetings. In Ireland, the probation service actively supports and promotes the work of volunteers through funded NGOs. In total, the probation service funds over 60 community-based organizations, and those two are charitable bodies with volunteer boards of management. And in the UK, 12 regions contract and commission specialist services, including through civil society involving volunteers. What I think is very interesting about this is that in order to support reintegration, volunteers are encouraged to be co-located along with probation officers, police, prisons, health workers, and others. And those volunteers may be peers. Moving on then to activities, um, reintegration, it's a major part of the work of volunteers. Um, in the Netherlands, one of 100 affiliates of Prison Fellowship International, and there are 60,000 volunteers globally in that organization, um, arrange for volunteers to meet prisoners in prison, to meet families, and to follow through after release. Merciful justice, helping prisoners and families to restore their lives during and after, during and after detention. And the government has a substantial annual budget uh, to support NGOs and volunteers. The Clink Restaurant Charity in the UK delivers 12 training projects. Four of them are prison restaurants. Uh, and the prisoners who participate in those gain national qualifications and soft skills. The mentors assist with CVs, ensuring somewhere to live, job interviews, meeting prisoners at the gate on the day of release and ongoing support, and around 280 employers in the hospita hospitality industry also engage closely with the project. The impact on reoffending is substantial. The cost savings are substantial. And about 100,000 customers have dined in prison restaurants, including, actually, myself. And this helps to change the perceptions of prisoners. And actually, all four restaurants have achieved number one on TripAdvisor on one occasion, all at the same time, suggesting the strong support of the community. Other projects involve peers. St. Giles is a charity using expertise and real-life past experience to empower people, turning a past into a future. Their peer advisor program works in 35 male and female prisons. Chris, based in Sweden, an association of people with similar experiences, a supportive network for individuals wishing to leave a life of crime and drug abuse behind them. The Shannon Trust inspires and trains prisoners who can read to teach prisoners who can't. And the Samaritans uh, operate a peer listener scheme in prisons to support those who are struggling to cope. And both then also engage volunteers in the community to support the work in prisons and after prisons. An example of multiple volunteer roles. In Ireland, the project delivers youth mentoring, parent mentoring, restorative justice volunteering, and victim panel volunteering. And independent research with the young people and their parents reports how much they value the fact that the mentors are volunteers, the relationship, the conversations, the encouragements, and hope. And 
Work with Women, the Footprints Project, uh, based in England, offers gender-specific support uh, for women. They assess needs and offer ad additional support around domestic violence, sexual abuse, and sexual exploitation. And the women are matched to female mentors who continue the gender-specific support in the community. Another scheme, a female out-of-court diversionary scheme, is run in partnership with the police. Women who are classified as vulnerable at the point of arrest may be given a conditional caution and the opportunity to work with the project uh, rather than uh, to proceed through the court process. And um, volunteer support can, can endure as long as is required. Um, many projects are restorative in their approach, um, and volunteers can receive uh, accredited uh, restorative justice training. And we've heard already about circles of support and accountability, which um, are delivered in several countries in Europe. Um, another example uh, is overseas prisoner reintegration and support. The Dutch um, Ministry of Justice and Probation Service uh, works with volunteers living in the country of detention of a Dutch person overseas, visits the prisoners and provide a range of assistance guided by the Dutch Probation Service resources and a team of international probation officers in the Netherlands. Um, let me then conclude. Um, and by thinking about the future. The World Congress and Kyoto Declaration represent a landmark in recognizing the value and promoting the role of volunteers. They are also important in the opportunity they provide to identify and address areas for future development, including evaluation. I mentioned the giant report, a study of practice in your volunteering in Europe. Their findings include that volunteering should be seen as an integral part of the rehabilitation process, not as an add-on or a free resource. Volunteering may be freely given, but it's not cost-free. It needs and deserves targeted support from all stakeholders. And the same report made a number of recommendations, including improved integration of justice and voluntary sector services, accredited training, improved recruitment, investing in a culture of volunteering, recognizing diversity, improving evaluation, and others. And uh, they then built on those recommendations and have a new resource about volunteers, managing volunteers in organizations working in the criminal justice system. So my closing remarks. The Kyoto Declaration on Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration it's without doubt a highly significant step towards enhancing the role of community probation volunteers. Through its recommendations, it will provide an opportunity at a global level to support the valuable work of volunteers in support of reintegration, preventing crime, and building peaceful and secure communities. And I support it uh, wholeheartedly. And at that point, may I just thank you for your attention and wish the Congress well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Pitt. Um, I think our request to explain the um, volunteer and uh, community volunteer system of whole Europe in 10 minutes was a quite an incredible order. So, but thank you very much for your comprehensive presentation. It was very informative. So now we would like to go on to the discussions. But as you might notice, uh, we are quite behind time. But uh, I would like to um, discuss just one point, a very important point in Kyoto um, Hokushi Declaration, which is public understanding. So I would like to discuss about um, public understanding, and I would like to ask um, one question to um, Ms. Oz um, from Canada um, uh, regarding public understanding. Uh, in her um, presentation, she was mentioning about uh, um, their efforts in COSA. And COSA is a um, um, volunteer involving efforts about um, sex and treatment of sex offenders. But um, in my um, impression, um, sex offender treatment is one of the very difficult um, area to involve public um, uh, community uh, residents and local residents or the community. So um, I would like to ask um, Ms. Oz and how you, you know, um, 
and mobilize uh, um, volunteers in this area. So would you kindly provide to us with your view, Ms. Oz? Sorry, Ms. Oz, maybe your microphone is off. There, sorry. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you. Yeah, I just, I, I just like to say, first of all, I, at least in my country, crime is incredibly emotive, um, and, and when anyone does um, uh, commit crimes, particularly sex crimes, um, there is usually um, a huge outcry. Um, and and uh, and then if the parole board or whenever these people do eventually get released, um, even at the very end of their sentence, it's still not seen as enough punishment. So uh, first of all, just our work is grossly misunderstood. Um, uh, but you know, successful reintegration rests in the community. That's where it happens. Government organizations. Um, can assist, um, but unless there's support in the community, um, it's very, very difficult. So I would just say a couple of elements are needed. One, education. We have to do a lot better at educating the public about what we do, who we do it for, and why we do it, and our success rates. Um, we have to educate not only the public, but the people within the criminal justice system, courts, police, Judges, we have a judges to jail program. I didn't, I didn't talk about that. That's that's for later. Um, but just to dispel the myths and, and to build a better understanding, outreach. We have to get out and do a lot more outreach to build, to nurture, and to sustain partnerships. Um, you know, to do that. The voices have to be legitimate and credible, and usually those people aren't usually from the government. They are community members, so it's seeking out community members who have the credibility to to tell um, uh, their community members um, uh, what we do. Uh, and finally, uh, uh, you know, as everyone has said, there is a need to invest to build volunteers. It is not free. The, the, the work, as Stephen said, is freely given, but it takes a lot of investment. Uh, so, and, and finally, I think my last point would be, our systems have to be open and transparent for the public to believe our, our statistics, our results. Um, uh, you know, so I, I, I think that's a, another incredible, important part of, of of attracting volunteers uh, to come and, uh, and, and share their time uh, with offenders. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ms. Oz. So, uh, thank you very much for your um, excellent presentations and your discussion. And actually, we are running out of time, so we don't have enough time for discussion. But I believe, and I think we all understood that um, each presenter uh, expressed um, his or her support for the Kyoto Declaration on Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration. So as a result of the presentations and discussions, I'll, I believe all of you, all of us, have shared the understanding that the matters described in the Kyoto Declaration on Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration are very important for the future development of the community volunteer system. So now I would like to proceed to the adoption of the Kyoto Declaration. Okay, so now that each panelist has endorsed the Kyoto Declaration. I would like to adopt the Kyoto Declaration of Probation Officers together with the panelists gathered here. So may I? Okay, so no objection. Okay, so um, once more I will ask, I will make it clear. So may I take it that this World Congress wishes to adopt the draft Kyoto Declaration on Community Volunteers Supporting Offender Reintegration? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. So 
it is decided. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, just now, the Kyoto Declaration on Committee Volunteers Supporting Offender Land Integration was adopted. Now, I'd like to invite Ms. Valerie Lebo, Chief of Justice Section of UNODC, to the podium. Originally, I'd like to ask Ms. Tashiro to hand over this declaration to Ms. Lebo here. However, due to the restriction of COVID-19, it can't be handed over directly. I'd like to both of you to present the declaration. Thank you very much, Ms. Tashiro and Ms. Lebo. This declaration is an important guide for our activities in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, let us have closing remarks developed by Ms. Valerie Lebo, the Chief of Justice Section of the UNODC. Ms. Lebo, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to have uh, received a copy of a Kyoto Declaration just adopted, of which uh, Mr. Imafuko presented the contents earlier. And I am delighted to take the floor on behalf of UNODC at the closing of this successful World Congress. Each crime congress aims at leaving a legacy of innovation in the field of crime prevention and criminal justice. I believe the declaration you have just adopted, its spirit, its innovative recommendations on the role of community volunteers will become a significant part of the 14th Crime Congress legacy. The Hogoshi system has a long-standing tradition in Japan. As we have heard throughout today's presentations and discussion, volunteer probation officers or community probation volunteers, as uh, we heard they are called in Kenya, are active in many countries across the world. They uphold the humanistic spirit, spirit of leaving no one behind. They partner with government's criminal justice practitioners and they promote the general public's understanding of offenders' needs. Volunteer probation officers powerfully contribute to crime prevention, to offenders' social reintegration, and to building inclusive and peaceful societies. Today's gathering has demonstrated how valuable it is for volunteer probation officers to have an international platform on which they can discuss their practices and the common challenges they face. On behalf of UNODC, I would like to welcome the, the recommendation that a global network of community volunteers supporting offenders' reintegration should be established to strengthen their cooperation and mutual support across borders. Reducing reoffending is an essential but often neglected aspect of crime prevention. When the international community reflects on strategies to reduce reoffending, the engagement of commu community volunteers to support offenders in a practical and human-centered way should feature prominently among strategies to reduce reoffending. To conclude, I would like to congratulate and thank the Ministry of Justice of Japan, especially its Rehabilitation Bureau, 
as well as Yuna Fay, all speakers and panelists, our moderators, all those who have prepared this event, participated in it, and ensure its great success. Above all, I would like to congratulate and wholeheartedly thank all community volunteers who use their time, life experience, and skills to contribute to their communi communities and support fellow human beings. They were wonderfully represented today by Ms. Ando Ryoko, and I you, uh, would like, if you allow me, to also mention Ms. Mai Naoko, a dedicated Hogoshi, who was supposed to moderate, but uh, was uh, prevented, uh, was compelled not, not to attend. I am convinced that today's meeting is a starting point for the further expansion and strengthening of the volunteer probation officers movement. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for receiving our passion as the Chief of Justice Section of the Union of DC. I hope that our effort will be realized under the support of UNODC. Ladies and gentlemen, today's World Congress is now over. I hope you enjoyed it to your heart content. Finally, I'd like to express my special thanks to the distinguished guests from the UNODC, Canada, Kenya, the Philippines, Thailand, and the UK, and all the other community volunteers and hogoshi who participate in the World Congress. Please enjoy the rest of your stay in Kyoto, and we wish you safe travel on your way home. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.